Good morning and welcome to Impact uh, on this Tuesday, the Tuesday before the one-year anniversary of the fire. My name is Russell Thomas, and before I introduce my guest, I want to let you know that uh, coming up next week, we've actually pre-recorded next week's uh, show uh, for May 2nd, and you, you're not going to want to miss it. it. It's Ross Penner from Mennonite Disaster Service, who's our guest, and Ross is going to be talking about how, the work that they've been doing helping the uninsured and the underinsured folks that uh, have been impacted by the fire. It's a remarkable story and uh, an important story, especially if you know people that are in those categories that maybe could use some help. So stay tuned for that uh, one week from today. But my guest this morning is Linda Myward. Linda is a trustee with the Fort McMurray Public School District, the Board of Trustees. Uh, she's also the chair of the Help Me Out Advisory Council on Aging. Council Committee, yeah. Yeah, is that what yeah. that is? Yes, it well, is. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here. I was saying off the air, Linda and I, you know, we, we've known each other for a long time, but I really don't know you. <laughs> like, really. I mean, I, I, I know who you are, and you're lovely, and uh, we've, we've been to I don't know how many events together, uh, but I really don't know your background. And, you know, things like, uh, how did you end up in Fort McMurray? Let's start, let's start with that. Okay. Well, I'm an Alberta girl, born and raised in Lacombe. Uh, my mom still lives there. So that's where I spent my growing up years. And when I was about 18, I decided to come up to Fort McMurray on what they called a summer workshop and ministry team. So in 1981, I came here and did four weeks of volunteer work with Evergreen Christian Reformed Church. And as they say, the rest is history. Long story short, I met my husband while I was up here. Uh, he was working up here. And after I left from my four-week uh, mission trip up here, um, we started corresponding. And I actually went to live in Kitchener, Ontario with a teammate who had been up here in Fort McMurray with me and spent some months with her. In January of 1982, I moved back to Fort McMurray. And in July of 1982, my husband and I were married. We've been here ever since. Our four children were born and raised here. And uh, it's my home. It's home. Lacombe, did you live in the town of Lacombe or in a farming area? Like what, were, what did your parents do? We lived on the Lacombe Research Station. It's a government uh, research facility for crop management, uh, livestock, that sort of thing. So. We grew up, it's a mile or two out of town. Uh, we grew up in the biggest playground you've ever seen with uh, animals that we could look at and enjoy and have fun with, but never had to take care of or slop the pigs or do any of that. Uh, my dad was a crop research soil technician and uh, he would take us along now and then to do the work that he did. My mom was a devoted stay-at-home mom and provider for me and my five brothers. Random question, favorite farm animal? Horse. Hmm. I, I love to ride. I used to love to ride when I was much younger. I had a thing about the, 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 the pig pen, the, where the piglets ran around. Love the pig pen. I can't explain why. Cool. I'm still getting therapy. <laughs> <laughs> My guest is Linda Myward, uh, grew up in the Lacombe area, came to Fort McMurray in the early 1980s. Now we're surrounded by young folks here from Shaw Cable and Steph here at uh, the bridge and describe Fort McMurray uh, in 1981. Wow. Well, to my eyes, it was this, I remember sitting on the Greyhound bus as we came around the corner by what is now the, the landfill. That was still the kind of the big entrance to the to the city and wondering what we were going to encounter because even back then it had this, you know, false reputation of this, you know, place out in the middle of nowhere that really was a, a nowhere place. And um, much of what I remember is that we just came to an ordinary city full of ordinary people who were living here raising their families, working, and doing what people elsewhere in the province did. We did, uh, we did vacation Bible school. We did some community service, uh, helping families, painting fences, some of that kind of thing. Um, 
but it was an ordinary existence. It was probably different than what I perhaps thought. It was far away from Edmonton, but it was an ordinary city. In uh, the early 80s, was Beacon Hill, Beacon Hill, and Avisan, Avisan, or, or do, was it Area 1, 2, 3? Were you around for that period? We were already into Beacon Hill and Abbasound. Okay. There were a lot of people in town who referred to the areas by number, and that was foreign to me. I, yeah. When we came, we stayed. Uh, our base was in Beacon Hill, and we ran Vacation Bible School out of Father Beauregard's school. That was just the community facility that sure. we used. So we spent a, a great deal of our time in Beacon Hill and Abbasand, and that's how I came to know them. It's important to talk about these things because uh, that history, that all the thick wood, I, I, I don't know what the reference to the numbers was, but we had area one, two, three, four, five, however many there were, and that was how they were, the community was named up until a particular point that the mm -hmm. neighborhoods got named. And of course the neighborhoods now, especially Beacon Hill and Abbasand and Waterways, are even more part of the history after what uh, we went through a year ago. How are you feeling about the, um, the anniversary coming up next week? That's a tough question, I know. That, that, that's a tough question. I'm feeling like I want to be all the more aware again of all of my friends and neighbors in my community. I know that there is a lot of emotion churning right now and I just want to be so mindful of, of everybody. I'm personally feeling, okay, we, we came through the fire relatively unscathed. Uh, I wasn't even part of the evacuation per se. I was in Edmonton uh, sitting on the couch holding my three-day-old granddaughter when I watched it unfold on social media. So I don't have an evacuation story to relive other than that as it was unfolding our other daughter who was 37 weeks pregnant was part of the evacuation so my evacuation trauma if you will was around family and loved ones being up yeah. here and needing to be safe so I'm, I'm optimistic, I'm, I'm encouraged by all the wonderful work being done in our community, and I just hope I can be mindful and kind and compassionate with those who are still finding things so very difficult for a whole host of reasons beyond their control, just like the fire was. Mindful is such a powerful word right now. Um, you, your role as vice chair of the um, board of trustees for the public district, uh, with that hat on, we know that the teachers and administrators carried a great weight on that day, many of them, and uh, they had to take care of a lot of children uh, under incredibly uh, stressful circumstances. How are how are they doing, and how are you as a board? Um, keeping an eye out for how the teachers and the administrators are doing? I would say that overall it's a positive tone, a positive outlook in the district. But that being said, we know that within our staff and our student and our family population we have people who are still hurting deeply. Our administrative staff uh, under Doug Nichols have done an absolutely amazing job leading the district through all of this. Um, from the moment evacuation began, the work began to take care of our students, our families, our staff. We are still receiving much encouragement and support. The Calgary Board of Education has been one of our biggest resources in terms of wisdom garnered from the flooding in Alberta a number of years ago. And they helped us to predict some of the phases and stages of recovery in this kind of trauma. And they've been pretty much bang on. And so we continue to look to them 
their support is right there ready when we need it. They have people who have been and who will continue to come up to assist us. So I feel that as a district we are in a very good place. Uh, we have staff who are still struggling of course with rebuilding of homes. I believe we had 43 staff who lost homes. So that continues but we we are in a good place. The, the future is positive and, and people are moving forward as best they can in their own individual circumstances. Yeah. That's all that can be expected. Uh, my guest this morning is Linda Myward, who is uh, a trustee with the Fort McMurray Public School District. We're going to take a break and come back with more of Impact right after this. Welcome back to Impact. Uh, Russell Thomas with Linda Myward this morning talking about life, the universe, and everything. And Linda, uh, you, I get the sense at a, at a deep level that you love what you do as, as a trustee with the public district. Is that a fair statement? That's an absolutely fair statement. Why? Because I'm a people person, I guess, would be one of the first reasons. And because my four children were born and raised here. And because of all the good things that I saw happening uh, in schools and as part of education, and because of my, my passion to be part of what happens with young people and how that impacts our future. Because what happens with the students of today impacts the future for all of us. I'm going to ask you a very hard question. At every board meeting, that I've been to anyway, there's a segment where uh, uh, teachers and students come up and make presentations and share some of their success with the board. Um, I assume you do that every time. We do. Are, are there some of those that rise above the others that just get to your heart and you go, oh man, I'm so proud of this district. Is, is, there, is there one or two examples that, you, that maybe pop to mind? Well, it's hard to bring one to the, to the foreground. I think, no, it, it would, I think it would be too hard to pull one out. We enjoy seeing, I enjoy seeing the students in front of us every month because it keeps my work real. Uh, when I was sworn in as a trustee in, 2000, in the fall of 2010, the boardroom was full of students at the grade six level they study governance and governments and the students were there to witness our swearing in and that still gets me because that is the heart of my work is to look into the eyes of students so whether they're coming from and presenting to us about math or last week we had a couple of musicians in the boardroom or technology it just encourages my heart that we are meeting the needs of the students uh, entrusted to our care. So no one experience would rise above the other, not for me. How much has changed because of the fire? In terms of the education, I think it's business as usual. We are very cognizant that one of the best ways to work towards recovery is to keep routine and keep focused on what our core business is, and that's education. That being said, we have to be aware and we have to be, again, mindful of the challenges that, that are out there and that are coming through the doors as a result of of the fire. So our core business carries on as usual as much as possible and now we supplement with other needs uh, that we see arising. We supplement the attention, uh, the, the services and supports that are needed. The community has changed so much not just because of the fire but the economy and, and we went through a period where there was a lot of growth and building and um, if anything, right now, I get the sense that there may be a surplus of space in the district, in both districts, pr frankly. Um, how do you see looking ahead over the next three to five years from a, from a planning perspective in terms of 
facilities, how to best manage available um, schools, and uh, some of the other initiatives in terms of like the comp uh, revitalization program and other things. We will move forward. Uh, yes, population has changed. Uh, we are down 4.69 or so-ish percent in students. 4.69 after the fire? From last from year. From the previous year. From the previous wow, year. that's less than I thought. Okay. Um, it's actually less than what we at one time projected as well. We've got a couple of new schools opening. Uh, enrollments are coming in for those. There are some challenges around small student populations. And uh, Doug and his staff are working to manage those and, and see where we go trying to keep things, uh, again, as, as solid and, and stable in the community during, during this time. You got a good leader in Doug. We have an excellent leader yeah. in Doug. And I imagine this is more on his side, but I'm very interested to know what the approach has been to the actual May 3rd uh, anniversary. I'm going to tell you why when we come back from our break, okay? Uh, this is, in fact, it is a collaboration of United Way, Fuse Social, our friends at Shaw TV, Fort McMurray, who make us look so darn handsome and, and pretty, and, uh, and our friends right here at 91.1 The Bridge. Well, good morning. Welcome back to uh, Impact one week before the uh, anniversary of the devastating wildfire. And my guest is Linda Mywert, who's a trustee with the public school district. And Linda, I'm, I'm really interested to know if the board has had any conversation or if you just sort of leave it, leave it in Doug and the senior administration's hands in terms of how do you approach that day? Because we've had the conversation at United. We had it. What do we do? What's the right thing to do? I had a call from the premier's office yesterday. They, what's the right thing to do? Um, what, what conversations, if any, have you had? We have definitely had uh, conversations. Doug and his staff are, are working hard. F again, from the wisdom of those who have experienced uh, traumatic events, uh, and especially from the Calgary Board of Education, who has been mentoring us and helping us through this, they recommend as much as possible business as usual for the children. That the routines, that the, the safety and security of, of being in an established routine in their classroom with their peers, with their teachers, is the best way to proceed. It's not that it can't be mentioned or that questions won't be answered if students do ask things, but as much as possible, it will, it will be a routine school day where the, the core focus is education, learning. That being said, there are things being put in place. Schools will do some different things. Some are starting the day with a pancake breakfast. Some are having uh, a family barbecue partway through the day. Each school gets to decide that on their own. They know their local context in their own school best. And counselors will be available. We have, we have people available. So we are prepared. Uh, as best we can, and definitely we are we are keeping an eye out for it. Uh, again, Doug and his staff are are doing an outstanding job. The reason I asked was an unnamed parent shared a story that uh, her child came home and just casually mentioned that they had an exam on May third, and the the parent almost lost their mind. They said, "What?" As it turns out, it, the, the 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 child misspoke, but so they're not they're not having an exam on May third, but. There has to be a sensitivity around that day. There's just no question. Absolutely. And that sensitivity is there. And we will do our best to handle it and to make it a, a good day for the kids. Like I say, we won't ignore that it's the anniversary of the fire, but nor will we be dwelling on it. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of comments that people can't wait for May 4th just to have it in our rear view mirrors. So let's shift a little bit. Uh, you are involved. Uh, and help me out with the name of the committee. The, 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 the committee. Advisory Committee on Aging. Thank you. Um, tell me about that work. So the Advisory Committee on Aging was established in September of 2014. Uh, much of it was born out of previous work that had been done around Willow Square. 
Um, and the then chairperson, Dave Hodson, uh, Dave Hodson and Joan Ferber from Golden Years were very instrumental in having this committee struck. We are a committee that focuses on the needs, uh, the successful things that we do in town and the challenges around services, supports, uh, and structures for seniors. We began our work applying to be included in the World Health Organization Age-Friendly Network. In the spring of last year, we received confirmation that we have been accepted into the WHO Age-Friendly Cities and Communities Network. And our work now focuses around eight domains or groupings or areas uh, under the WHO and we will work towards being now designated as an age-friendly uh, city and community. What's the biggest challenge to get there? Awareness, I think. I think we are battling still uh, the thought that this is a place to come and work, uh, perhaps raise your family and then leave, where in fact more and more seniors, the trends are changing, more and more families are staying here, more and more seniors are staying here to be close to their children and grandchildren and staying here even when some of their children move because it's their home. It's the community that they've given so much to. It's the place that they want to grow old. So our vision statement for the Advisory Committee on Aging is Aging with Dignity in Wood Buffalo. And so even as we speak, we are all growing older. And I said that my involvement, my application to sit on this committee was because my 80th birthday isn't as far away as people think. And people laugh at that, but the truth is that aging is the preferred future for each and every one of us. And so we want to work, the committee wants to work towards that designation where we are aware of challenges faced by seniors, where we change the things that are within our power to change, and where we fully support the senior population in our community, like we do families and workers and younger people. It has been inspiring working alongside this, the St. Aidan's Society team and the work that they have done as they've shifted towards caring for seniors. And they're just one example, but it's nice to see that seniors are being taken seriously. Um, what is your prognosis for Willow Square? I hate to even bring it up, but it's been such a, a boondoggle for so long. Do you see a time when that will actually, will have something there? Or would so, you like to plead the fifth on that? No, I won't plead the fifth on that because it's important that we are transparent with what we know about what's happening with Willow Square. In fact, I attended a steering committee meeting on Willow Square. I sit on the steering committee as, as a representative of the Advisory Committee on Aging. So what is, what is currently underway is the government of Alberta has begun work for a continuing care facility on Willow Square. It's, it's preliminary, it's in the early stages, but I believe that we will see continuing care, which is a facility that will have supportive living units and will also have long-term care, which requires uh, medical professionals. And I believe the commitment is there to see this project through and the the next stage will be um, the, the master plan and our committee advisory committee on aging will continue to be involved on that steering committee uh, be the eyes and ears uh, hopefully for our community uh, and celebrate that this is finally moving forward it's been a long time coming i think a lot of people will be dancing in the streets when we see some construction going on there absolutely linda thank you so much for all that you do uh, with passion and determination and so much energy and uh, you know you've had a great impact on this community over many many years and uh, we love what you do thank you i love my community Linda Myward has been my guest, trustee on the Fort McMurray Public School District and also the chair on the Advisory Council on Aging. 
I should have written that down. She's amazing, and it's been an honor to have her as our guest. Again, next week, uh, a really important show, the day before the anniversary. Ross Penner is going to join us from Mennonite Disaster Service. It's a great interview uh, with a lot of great information, so make sure to tune in for that. You've been listening to Impact. It is a collaboration of the United Way, Few Social, Shaw TV, Fort McMurray, and our friends right here at 91.1 The Bridge. Thank you.